And we're back with another abdominal massage technique. This one is going to contrast the mind abdominal massage. So first of all, if you are here and you're just getting started, you have IBS or SIBO or IBD or GERD, and you're looking for a massage technique, start with the mind abdominal massage technique first for at least a few weeks, and then you can revisit this one. This is the technique that is more for you if you have restrictions, if you've had scar tissue or if you've had surgery. So folks, if you have had your gallbladder removed, your appendix removed, an ovary removed, a uterus removed, if you have had, have, had a baby removed from your uterus via a C-section, this is the video more so for you. Certainly anybody with a gastric bypass or a gastric sleeve, any of those sorts of surgeries in the abdominal area tend to leave some scar tissue or some adhesions behind. And this is the video for you guys. I've had this pop up time and time again, where I've had a patient who has SIBO. And the only thing that makes sense is that they had a C-section and that was the trigger for them. Or they've had an appendix removed and that was a trigger or a gallbladder removed and that was a trigger for them. And those are the cases where I start hunting a little bit more for specific areas of scar tissue or restriction or adhesions. Again, if you have IBS, SIBO, IBD, GERD, bloating, and you're stumbling on this video and you have not tried the abdominal massage video that I already posted, the Mayan abdominal massage technique, I highly recommend starting with that first. It's a lot more gentle. It's a lot more broadly useful. But if you have had any of those surgeries or if you have a reason to have specific areas of scar tissue or adhesions, stick around and we're going to do this video next. Okay, so let's start off with a little bit of a mini evaluation first, and then I'll teach you the technique in and of itself. So think about where you might have ad abdominal adhesions or scar tissue or problems of this nature. So if you have had an appendectomy, for example, if you've had your appendix removed, you're going to focus a lot more of your effort down here in the lower right quadrant. And you can think about, you know, if you make a dividing line through the belly button either direction, this lower right hand piece of your abdomen is where I'm talking about. Specifically, if you look for the hip pointer bone right here on the pelvis, you're going to be kind of feeling around just on the inside of that. So this is where you're going to focus your attention if you have you know, a history of appendix removal, or maybe an ovary was removed or something of that nature, something down in this right quadrant. Now, if you've had your gallbladder removed, you're going to go up and to the right. So it's going to be the yin to the yang. So lower right for appendix, upper right for gallbladder removal. And you can see right about here, this is where my rib cage is, the very edge of that rib cage. And normally the gallbladder would be about midway. So here's the tip top the apex, here's my side. So you would go about halfway between those two points or up at a 45 degree angle from the belly button. And then the gallbladder used to live right under here. So if you curl your fingers up under that rib cage, that's right about where it used to live, give or take a little bit. So a lot of the scar tissue and adhesions from a previous gallbladder removal surgery might be in this area right near the rib cage, just tucked up underneath the rib cage a teeny bit, or even just a little bit inferior or below the rib cage. So you're going to focus a lot more of your effort hunting for these adhesions in this area. Now, say that you've had endometriosis, or you have endometriosis, or you've had a hysterectomy, or perhaps a C-section, those scars and those adhesions are going to be just below the navel typically. And you might go a little bit lower even than what I'm going to show you because I don't want anything to be too risque for YouTube, but basically you'll go below the belly button and you can see here's the level of my hip pointer bones. So you can kind of think about here-ish and possibly below is where you're going to find a lot of the adhesions of the scar tissue more specific to anything related to the uterus. You can imagine that the pelvis is like a bowl and the uterus sits inside the bowl normally. So you might have to go a little bit further down to get into that bowl that the pelvis creates for you. Now, if you have had a procedure or if you've had something done to your spleen, for example, or the latter half of your colon, you might focus your efforts over here on the other side of the rib cage. The spleen lives up and under, similar to the, the liver and the gallbladder hanging out under the rib cage on this side. Under this side is where the spleen is going to be. So if you've had any sort of procedure or surgery up there, or keep in mind that this could be part of the colon that you're going to feel adhesions on, and I'll tell you about the colon in a minute. 
And then last but not least, if you have had any sort of surgery or procedure on your sigmoid colon, your descending colon, the rectum, anything in that nature, or possibly your left ovary, then you're going to focus more of your efforts in this lower left quadrant down again by this hip pointer bone. Now, the colon and the small intestines are a little bit of a wild card. I'm talking a little bit more about specific adhesions for uh for people who have had medical procedures. But this could be a more broadly useful technique for people with IBS, SIBO, and IBD just as a whole because you can have adhesions elsewhere. So for example, if we were to trace the colon, it would start down in this lower right-hand corner. It would go straight up just underneath the rib cage, and then it takes a 90-degree turn, maybe droops down a little bit, hangs out underneath this rib cage, goes straight down, and then the sigmoid colon kind of squiggles down until it reaches the rectum and the anus. So all of this turf on the sides of your abdomen and up at the tip top, you could have a little bit of restriction from the colon itself. And that could happen with inflammatory bowel disease and endometriosis. That endometrial tissue can actually adhere all in and amongst the abdominal cavity. So it's kind of a wild card with endometriosis where the scar tissue and the adhesions might be but that's the colon, give or take. And then if you kind of scoop your belly a little bit, like just on either side of your belly button, try to gather that all in your hands. And my teacher for visceral manipulation, he was extremely European and he was so funny. He was like, think of it as a bouquet. The bouquet that you're holding in your hands right now is the small intestine. So everything in the middle section of your abdomen is really going to be predominantly your small intestine that you're feeling. So let's get started. I have not had any abdominal surgeries. I've never had endometriosis or PCOS or anything like that that I'm aware of. So I'm just going to poke around a little bit, but I'm going to focus for my demo down in this quadrant because you guys might be familiar with my story. Ooh, and I've already got a little bit of tenderness there. Um, my story with my IBS and what I hypothesized was SIBO was that my ileocecal valve was crapping out on me, pun intended. And one of my chiropractic colleagues was always evaluating this lower right quadrant for me and telling me that my ileocecal valve was a miss. And he kept asking, he's like, what are you eating? What are you doing to it? I can link down to the, the show notes for today, the interview that I did with my colleague who actually put that together for me and told me about the ileocecal valve for the first time. So I'm just going to poke around here because I know my history with the ileocecal valve. Again, here's the hip pointer bone and I'm kind of curving my fingers in and I'm feeling that inner part of the pelvis a little bit. And what you are going to look for is places that are particularly tender, like right there is a bit tender for me. And I actually feel it referring pain a little bit towards my navel. I feel it right here too when I press there. So that is where I'm going to focus my efforts. Yeah, there's a little bit of tenderness there too as I move up towards the cecum, the very first part of the, the colon. And if I go a little bit more medially or towards the belly button, it's actually even a little bit more tender. And that's the very tail end, the distal end of the ilium. So as I'm digging, I can feel a couple of points like right there. I'm actually going to hold it like a, like a trigger point for a couple of seconds. Um, I can feel a couple of points. There we go. That's better. I can feel a couple of points where there's some restriction and some adhesion. So this is where I'm going to focus on. But like I said, do this in whatever way is most appropriate for you. If you have had your gallbladder removed and you feel some point tenderness, or if you feel something that feels really fibrous and really like gritty or like a scar tissue kind of feeling, if you feel that up here, you're going to focus your efforts up here. If you feel it here, if you feel it here, you've just got to get familiar with your abdomen mush around a little bit, just feel around until you feel something that you feel like needs to be worked on. And this is where I'm going to start. So the technique that I've had some patients do, particularly if it is so point tender and so inflamed that I feel like I can't work on it yet because I don't want them to absolutely hate my guts. Like I feel like they need to open up that area for me before I'm able to do visceral manipulation. What I've had people do is say like, the area that I want to work on, this ileocecal valve area, is right here. So again, my hip pointer bone is about here, so it's real, real close. First, what I'm going to have you do is with dry hands, no lotion, no essential oils, no nothing like that, 
with dry hands, you're gonna put your hands kind of broadly and, and flat on the skin around the area. And then using a pretty light pressure, I would say it's a three or a four out of 10 pressure. You're gonna push in a little bit, but you're gonna drag your hands up. And as you go a little bit more, like I ended up using a little bit deeper pressure. So that beginning part of the motion, I may be a two out of 10, and then I use a little bit more pressure. And what you're gonna feel is you're gonna feel like the skin is stretching and like that tissue directly under the skin is stretching and you're gonna hold it. And in chiropractic, we would say that this is taking tissue slack out. So the slack, meaning like the movement that you're gonna get from just the skin and the fat and the subcutaneous tissue, when you're trying to move a bone with chiropractic adjustments, you don't want all of your movement to just be this. You want this tissue slack to be gone so that you're just applying pressure to the bone that you're trying to adjust. So similarly, we're gonna borrow from that, that, uh, that topic. And you can see what I'm starting to do too. And I've got a little bit of like some looser skin and some flab as most humans do. And I'm actually starting my grip a little bit below the target area. So I'm starting a little bit below that hip pointer bone even. And that gives me the ability to really drag it up with me. And then you're gonna hold that for about 20 or 30 seconds, taking deep breaths, trying to relax, even though this massage is a little bit more aggressive than my an abdominal massage, but still try to relax. And then after you hold that for 20 or 30 seconds, you're gonna do the opposite. So we just drag the tissue slack and the stretch up. So we're gonna do the opposite. So start up a little bit higher. So I'm gonna start up closer to my rib cage, for example, and try to grab some of the tissue and move down. And I'm actually gonna play with the angle here. I think if I use my the heel of my hand here, it might work a little bit better. It's harder to get a grip with the heel of your hand. It's easier to get a grip with your fingertips though. So I think I'm gonna stick with that. So just using broad hands, push down. Yeah, I'm getting much better grip with my fingers. And the same thing, you're just trying to stretch that tissue. You should feel the skin and the subcutaneous tissue stretching just a little bit. My goodness and you'll hold that stretch for about 20 or 30 seconds and then release now you could do the same thing in a different direction we can go right to left so likewise i'm going to start way further away than what i think so my hip pointer bone is here i'm going to wrap my hands around the abdomen and i'm going to drag like that and again by the time you get to the point where you're holding you're gonna use a little bit firmer pressure, maybe a four or five, maybe even to six, like I'm in a six right now, but it's not particularly tender. It's not too bad. So I could use a little bit more pressure. If something is really painful, if something's really tender for you, don't use six out of 10 pressure. Back off to a point where you feel a bit of a stretch, but you're not killing yourself. If you're killing yourself, it's too much. Okay, and then Go ahead. And then similarly, again, my target area is right about here. I'm gonna start my grip over closer to the belly button or maybe a little bit past. And now I'm gonna to try to drag, actually, this is kind of weird. I wonder if I could use my belly button. I think I could hook onto the belly button a little bit. So I'm trying to push with this hand and pull with this hand. I don't think the belly button technique's working as well as I hoped. You could also try to hook on with your fingers like this. I think that's gonna work better. Then you'll hold it. If you wanna be an overachiever, you could try to do every direction of a clock. So when you go straight up, that'll be your 12 o'clock. Then you could stretch and hold for one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, and you could stretch and hold for 20 or 30 seconds for each. Now to just give a quick demo, if you're focusing up on this rib cage as an example, so I just gave you the example with the lower right quadrant for the ileocecal valve, the ovary, you know, any sort of surgical procedures down here. But if you are focusing your efforts up here because you had your gallbladder removed and you've got some restrictions, then you could do the exact same thing. So you're gonna pull up a bit. You're gonna grab that tissue. And like, I'm actually gonna pull up and over my rib cage a bit. There we go. 
flat hand worked a little bit better. And you'll feel some of that skin just below the rib cage, kind of stretching. And then similarly, I'm going to take my fingertips. I'm going to drag down. So again, here's my rib cage right about here. So I'm starting my grip right about on the rib cage and I'm dragging down and hold that for 20 seconds. You could start a little bit further away from, so, you know, we're aiming for middle of the rib cage, usually with gallbladder stuff. You could start a little bit lower on the rib cage, like my hand is right now. You can see I kind of snuck my finger in there. That's good. Ooh. Ooh, that smarts a little bit. Maybe I need to hold this. And then similarly, kind of get your grip on this side of the ribcage. Use your other hand to help you. And that's it. So focus on whatever area you feel like you have restrictions or you feel that palpable connective tissue kind of adhesion or restriction or like a trigger point tenderness. These are the things that you can look for. And then what I always have my patients do, let me grab it, is after you mash the crap out of that, because that can be a little bit much and it can feel like you're giving yourself a bit of, um, what do they call it? Not rope burn, like Indian burn, you know, when kids used to go like this. Um, then what you could do is get a little bit of lotion or cream or coconut oil, olive oil, whatever you want to use, and just a drop or two of an essential oil. This one is cardamom, if you're not familiar. Oh my God, it's the best smell in the entire universe, you guys. You have to get cardamom oil. Rub that. Rub that in the area. Now, for essential oils, there are other blends. Like, I really like plant therapy, so their digest, or digest Zen, I think it's called, would work lovely. I think cardamom is stupendous for this sort of stuff. Lavender is very anti-inflammatory and lovely. Any of the anti-inflammatory oils would work really well for this. Or you could just use plain lotion. If you're not, you know, well stocked with an essential oil apothecary, then you don't have to do that part. But I, I like to get a little bit of essential oil in there topically and absorb through the skin. But all you're going to do is you're going to massage that same area with a little bit of oil and a little bit of lotion. And you can see I'm still using pretty firm pressure for this because we just released some scar tissue and adhesions. I'm probably using between a four, four to five out of 10 pressure. Like I'm not really digging for the kidneys, but I'm, uh, I'm still mushing stuff around pretty good. And then if there's any sort of tenderness that you feel like you need to work on still, you could do that with a little bit of lotion because you're not trying to drag the tissue with you anymore. You're just kind of massaging and mushing things around and getting that nice therapeutic oil in there for the time being. But that is the technique for adhesions and scar tissue. It's a little bit of of a, a quick and dirty version of visceral manipulation. There's a lot more to it than that. Like somebody who's trained in visceral manipulation like myself, we can feel the stomach, different parts of the small intestine. We can feel adhesions and the ileocecal valve a little bit better than probably you could at home. And sometimes you've got a little bit of an awkward angle, like the chicken wing thing with your arms to do. But you can at least start to work on this process at home. And if you want to go see somebody who's trained in visceral manipulation, I will put a link in the doobly-doo for that as well. There are wonderful people all over the country and all over the, the planet for that matter who have been trained in visceral manipulation. And it's a really wonderful technique for IBS and SIBO and it has helped a lot of my patients. So I will put that link in the doobly-doo down below. I hope that this technique helped you. If you have any sort of success with it or with the mind abdominal massage, feel free to link in the doobly-doo down below and let me know if this has helped you. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.